So on one of the comments on my YouTube channel, uh, someone asked this question, should I remove my gallbladder because of a stone, okay? Well, the first thing I wanna let you know is that check with your doctor before doing any of the things I'm gonna tell you to do right here, okay? I'm not telling you not to take your gallbladder out. I'm not telling you to take your gallbladder out. But I wanna just give you information to think with. Let's start off with some of the symptoms that can occur with a gallbladder problem and or a gallbladder stone. Uh, right shoulder pain, because if there's tension right here and then there's swelling, it'll put pressure on the nerve called the phrenic nerve that goes right up to the right side, right into your neck, okay? It can go up to your head as well. A lot of people have this and they think it's an injury to the shoulder, but it's coming from the gallbladder. If you're um, curious about that, if you have that, just massage into that area underneath your right uh, rib cage and see if the right sh shoulder pain goes away. Usually it'll just go away like that. Then you know there could be a problem. Okay, bloating, uh, indigestion, pain or tension or fullness underneath the right rib cage, anywhere in this area right here. And there's a lot of other symptoms as well. When we're talking about stones though, we want to know what causes stones. This is the most important piece of information, okay? Now, if your entire gallbladder is completely impacted with stones, that's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, you've gone past the point of reversal, and if it's just, there's too much, too many stones in there, you might need just to have the whole thing out. But if there's just one stone in there, okay, there's other things that you may want to look at. But we need to know what causes the stones, and we need to know what change in diet must occur to dissolve that stone. If someone tells you that you really don't need your gallbladder, it's an extra organ, it's not necessary, they're lying to you. There's a condition called post-cholecystectomy syndrome. Basically what this means is, is there are symptoms that occur after you have your gallbladder removed, okay? Symptoms that occur 40% of the time. That's actually pretty common, okay? Um, you could have even lifelong symptoms gas, bloating, nauseousness, anal leakage, constipation, diarrhea. Bile salts, which are concentrated in the gallbladder, actually help move things to your colon. So if you're deficient in bile, you're gonna have more constipation. If you have too much bile, you're gonna have diarrhea. So what happens is maybe they took out the valve and it's just draining too much and then you're getting too much bile. Or in another situation, because you don't have the sac that holds and stores and concentrates the bile, then what happens is you're gonna be bile deficient and you'll have more constipation because the gallbladder actually concentrates the bile up to 20 times, so it's super concentrated. So now we have a situation where we have diluted bile and you're no longer gonna have the power to extract uh, the vitamin A, D, E, K, from your foods, not to mention the omega-3 fatty acids and the DHA, you can't pull those out as much anymore. And so what happens is you could start becoming deficient in vitamin A, vision problems at night, can't see, um, vitamin D, bone pain, calcium problems, vitamin E, heart, K1, which is um, bleeding and bruising, K2, which is calcium deposits, DHA is lack of memory problems. So there's all sorts of things that can happen long-term by not having the bile. So what I'm trying to point out is this, if you're gonna have the gallbladder out, there should be a very good reason, uh, not just one little stone. All right, so now let's talk about what causes a stone. Very, very important. It's really a combination of two things. Too much concentration of cholesterol plus two little bile salts. The bile salts help to break down the cholesterol. So it's a combination of both of these right here. So it's not just about having high cholesterol. You also have to have a deficiency of bile salts to have a stone form. Now, what you'll need to know is what could deplete your bile salts, okay? Birth control pills, okay? Or too much estrogen. How do you get estrogen? From commercial dairy, okay? That could do it as well. High levels of cortisol, and I'm talking like prednisone, like the medication prednisone can deplete your bile. High levels of insulin, as in insulin resistance and prediabetes, and so many people. I would say 
probably minimally 65% of the population has high insulin and they don't even know it because they've never tested it. But it could be up to like 75% of the population is high insulin. And that's going to deplete your bile salts eventually. And that comes from high carbohydrate diets. All right, liver damage. Why? Because the liver makes bile. And if you have cirrhosis or a fatty liver or inflammation in the liver as hepatitis, then you're not going to be able to make the bile that you need. Also, you don't have enough flora or friendly bacteria in your colon. The bacteria actually help you recycle the bile. So if there's not enough bacteria, you can't recycle it, so you'll be bile deficient. Constipation, okay? Well, if you're constipated, things are gonna back up and you're not gonna get the right recycling effect. And this also is a symptom of lack of bile as well. Um, also, uh, PPIs, it's an antacid. As you become more diabetic, the risk of getting stones goes higher and higher and higher because of this insulin situation. Higher amounts of vegetables to help counter some of the cholesterol. If you're doing high cholesterol foods and eggs and things like that, that's fine, but offset it with vegetables as well. Plus this, give the microbes fiber that they need to feed so they can become um, plentiful, so they can help you recycle the bile as well. Higher fat diet. Now, wait a second. I thought that we're supposed to cut the fat back, right? Well, I'm going to put a link down below. It's a very interesting study, okay, that talks about uh, bile salts. I'm not going to give you the long-term name for bile salts. I'm just going to say bile salts. Bile salts in diets higher in fat prevent gallbladder stones during weight loss. Interesting. The meta-analysis herein suggests that UDCA, that's a type of bile salt, and or a diet higher in fat decreases the overall risk of gallbladder stones forming during weight loss. Now, why? Because what triggers the bile release and production is saturated fats, okay? Interesting. You would think I need to cut the fat down, but actually, when you do low-fat diets, it increases your risk of getting a stone. Interesting. Now, if you get on a ketogenic plan, you start eating a tremendous amount of fat, it could be that you just don't have enough bile to digest the fat and you will get symptoms of bloating and things like that. You need to cut back. But the point is that consuming the fat isn't the thing that is causing the stone itself. It's the lack of bile. Moderate protein, we talked about that. Modifying dairy, because this can give you more estrogen and other hormones that could aggravate the situation. And also nuts. Now the nuts don't cause gallstones, but they can aggravate the gallbladder, especially if you're consuming raw nuts and they're not germinated, which means you're soaking them and drying them out and you're getting rid of certain factors that um, inhibit digestion. And lastly, the quality of food is very, very important. If you're consuming things cooked with uh, vegetables like soy oil or corn oil, or when you're dressing, you have soy oil, um, it's GMO, so that's why I'm saying do organic. Or you're consuming non-organic things, you got pesticides, insecticides, things like that, so you wanna go more quality, and hopefully then you can avoid getting your gallbladder removed. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now, and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.